Hello everybody and welcome to the Long Run live stream and podcast. Um, another new uh, opening sequence there, a little bit more refined than last week, a little bit less, yeah, easy, yeah. less, less energetic, but equally yeah. equally poignant and um, to the point and bang on, I thought. Excellent. Just as distorted, yeah. right? You really hit the yeah, distortion on that. We're gonna we're gonna have to add to it though, boys, because what I found out is and welcome by the way, everybody. We want to hear from oh, you. Oh yeah, hello people. everybody, by the way. Yeah. Oh, there's people out there. I hope now. What we've got adding to the intro next week, and I love this. We are now officially <clears throat> the biggest running podcast in the Falkland Islands. Wow. Yep. yep, we've had one download. So whoever you are in the Falkland Islands, thank you and welcome. Now, you can't get much more global than that, can you? That's what I'm saying, Joe. We're, we're everywhere. We, I mean, we've been downloaded. You know, it'll take you about three weeks Korea. to get to the Falklands. That's what I mean. We're, but we're South Korea, our Nicaragua listeners being yeah. back. And, you know, obviously, we're still the biggest podcast in Malta, period. Um, but, yeah, Falkland Islands. We're now the biggest running podcast in the Falkland Islands. Amazing. Well, if that seismic news wasn't enough to juice you up for another Friday night offering of... Uh, everyday runner banter then i don't know what is really but here we are we are the um this is a long run podcast courtesy of the uh, 40 runs running community we try and appeal to everyday runners and chat about the sort of things that you're concerned with and uh, have a bit of a laugh as well so um thanks ever so much for joining us um if you're um you can watch us currently on facebook you should be able to we've had <clears> a few <throat> technical problems in previous weeks totally we like says, but that's always good news so no, you can yeah, yeah and chip in with your questions and please do so on the, on the, if you're watching us on YouTube as well. But if you're not live, you can still download us on the all the usual um podcast bits and bobs, yes, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, and all those sort of bods. So and please get in touch with us as well via email at uh, longrunshow at gmail.com. <laughs> Thanks ever so much. <laughs> so Chris, how's your week been, mate? Uh, yeah, I don't know where it's gone. It's it's flown by this week. It really has. Uh, Tove and I, we we did our little run. The video will come out for that in a few weeks' time where we ran home. Uh, so I don't want to get too much into that because it was spoiled because it's a good video. Um, that was from the Olympic Stadium. Yeah, and then um, this week's flown by, and the clubs have been like packed this week. Like I think we had like twenty four ladies on Monday, a load of new faces, and we've got a load more coming, which is just awesome. Um, and I know the clubs have been busy around the country, but yeah, and it's funny. Obviously, we're going to talk about that, funnily enough, tonight. But yeah, it's just, it's just been, yeah, it's, it's, it's just flown by. I can't believe it's already Friday. But I look forward to um, Fridays, obviously, to um, catch up with you yeah. boys and have a bit of a nap. So yeah, we'll have it. Alan's, Alan's with us as usual. Al, you all right? You had a good week? Yeah, pretty good. I think this is the first period, probably since September, I've nailed bit of consistency so i track my running over a seven day rolling cycle and uh it's been above 30 miles pretty much all the way through january so it feels like it's coming back so bit, of a, bit of a big step because you know you have spoken before about you know a few little issues and things you know yeah. so but you feel like you're back in the game do you getting there getting there brighton marathon's very close it does very seem close. that everybody's i mean me me Chris and no, I mean you boys, you're doing Brighton as well, but like I'm not doing one till um, Edinburgh, and that's like seven or eight weeks after Brighton. And yeah. I'm thinking, oh, I've got another three, I've got another couple of weeks before I need to start. And people are charging about on week five or six already. You yeah, but I'm getting out there, getting my squats done, get my lunges done at seven a.m. in the morning three times a week. So I'm hoping that's going to uh, give me a little bit of uh, extra strength to get through the next whatever it is, ten weeks or so. God, I, I started doing natural it. lunges, Al. Natural lunges? Yeah. As a no, this is brilliant. This, right. Go and walk the dog. Yeah. So he's got a ball and a rope, yeah? You throw it. Obviously, he drops it at your feet. So instead of just okay. bending over, the sun, you do Ty, some lunges. Don't count. You're, do you're walking the dog. That doesn't count as cross-training. It Honestly, does. 
You've got to think everything. about how you're doing it. You forget what do you it when think, you can, Pete? Do you think walking the dog counts as cross training? Chris is obviously skeptical. I mean, I'm, it depends how quick you're walking your dog. I'd say. I, I, I how far are you were going? Two dumbbells yeah, from middle is a lot less commitment than going out and buying a dog if you really yeah. want to get into the lunges. But that's yeah, but dumbbells not going to love you back, is it? You're not going to get no. You're not going to get a lot True. of love from the dumbbells. On the they're thought. a bit heavy as well. Yeah, well, well, dumbbells. Depends how big your dog is, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't tend to carry him. <laughs> well, that's what you're missing then. You need him at back, stick him on your backpack. And you can have weighted weighted dog vest. What's oh, the point? Yeah. This then? is not a good sign of the way this podcast is going to go, is it, boys? Yeah, yeah. we've, we've, up a bit. we've got a bit one man and his dog we'll already, haven't we? Totally, you know? Look, I'm going to bring it back on track, right? Okay. National running show this weekend. Let us know in the oh, comments. Yes. Obviously, if you're abroad, that doesn't count. And if you're listening to this as catch up, Send an email into something.com at gmail thingy and Long let us know gmail. what it was like. Um, yeah, let us know what the show was like if you're listening to this on catch up. But if you're going, let us know what day you're going. Uh, Alan's going to be there, uh, he's going to be mooching about. So make sure you go and say hello to him. If you get a selfie with Steve. Alan, yeah, We'd anybody who gets Alan's a selfie, selfies. obviously, I'm this is a, a this is an audio based format so sending your um selfies with our to long run show at hotmail.com and no there's not email wally is gmail yeah and send I'm not that, be there about that half past 10, so don't rush i'm park yeah. running first so i won't be there oh, yeah. the, where yeah, are you park yeah. running now oakland's park run just around the corner from the nec less oh, than a, I less than a park run now. away oh that's all oh, right chat, folks yeah. you want to think about that you can um if you're not headed off to Birmingham already, pack your trainers. You might be able to get out with Al. It does mean yeah. a five o'clock start here, though, to get there for a park run. So I mean, that's just that. I'll be asleep by the time uh, uh, Susie Chang comes on at quarter to twelve. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. I've got to go bed halfway through this podcast just to make sure I get my sleep. I was going to say, Al usually drops off. If anybody's noticed, anybody's been following the live streams over the last couple of weeks, Al tends to drift out of consciousness about 7.45 on a Friday night. Yeah, absolutely. We, we kind of... Um... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Whoever just whacked that in, uh, make sure you hit Toby's thing about putting your... the Whatever his toe like that. But what Mel's organised. Big shout out to Mel, who's um, not going to be policing. So if you want to go to Bushy Park Run this weekend, no one's going to be checking if you're licking or nicking the um, barcode, yeah. so because the police isn't there, Mel's not there. So yeah, Mel be in Birmingham, and she's organising the um, the uh, meet up. And there was a there was a big post a couple of days ago she put out. So um, that'll have all the details. And it was like it was like a military operation when they all the details of what was going on Love and stuff. Me. So uh, catch up with Mel and uh, yeah, send us your pictures because yeah. we can't go. We're not going. So we'd love yeah. to be there, but you know, one thing and. One thing or another means that we can't. Now, I'm sure people at the running show will be doing a fair old bit of shopping. There'll be plenty of stalls a bit. So, Chris, um, you had a little... Um, yeah, I got the ant. You got, the, got ant. the ant. It's time for Chris's rant. We've not had a Chris's it's, rant it's for not, a little while. It's not a rant. It's not a rant. I just, I mean, I just got the ant in general, really, about the cost of stuff. Like... Uh, give it an so I put a post today. Yeah, I put a post today on on if you're not part on the community part on the YouTube channel, check it out. But I've got so, and this is not a directed at because you know I love Garmin and thanks very much for sending me you know the Fenix Seven to test out, right? But that Garmin that they sent me is eight hundred and sixty pounds. Now that just defies logic. I, I don't, I don't. I, running, everyone says oh, it's meant to be free, right? But you. Most of the time, you probably go out and buy a GPS watch or something. But who in their right mind really needs to spend eight hundred and sixty pounds on a watch? I've, and I think all these watch manufacturers are taking the Mickey, charging that because you can go and get a Garmin, or you can go and get a used Garmin. We well, can't now because it's off of eBay because I sold it. But you can go and get a Garmin seven three five, right, or something for like hundred and something quid, or you can get a new two four five. I think worst case. So what two hundred quid? I don't know what they are, but I think they're less than that, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. eight hundred. It's like it goes back to my point. Do you remember when I I lost it about Nike and their Alpha flies that were like yeah. three hundred notes? At some point, someone's got to turn around and say no. Now this watch, I'm sure, 
is awesome, right? And I've been reading the stuff today because I have to, you know, read up about it before I, you know, start wearing it and reviewing it and stuff. And it's got loads of stuff on it, right? Loads of stuff. But there's more stuff on there than there is in the space shuttle. You do not need, I reckon, as an everyday runner, ninety percent of the stuff on there. So, eight hundred. I, I, I just don't. So get what do you get for your extra monkey? Then what do you get for your extra five hundred quid? A touch screen. Uh, it, it just, yeah, there's well, there's more than that. I, sh- I mean, again, I've been a bit. Out how much? You, you know, how much? You, when was the last time? I mean, you said everybody has their. If it, I'm sure the most, vast majority of people we're talking about, you know, they use a Garmin. Yeah. Now, when you're off, when you're running, you have your set. I have my set ones that I, I like. Agree, I, have, yeah. I have it running. I have a lap with the pace on it. Yeah, and stuff like that. If you want to do your heart rate, you can adjust it. But you pick your one. You don't sit there tapping it all the time while you're going along, do you? That's what I mean. And all the stats and all this sort of stuff. And I don't know. It it just. I think because I look at it from an, an everyday runner's perspective, right? I I just think that it's it's just they're taking the meat. All these companies, and I'm not just you know talking about Garmin. I'm talking about other watch brands. You know, Polar are the same mm-hmm. and. Nike are the same, and it they just seem to be taking the Mickey out of us all. I would, I I would say, like I said the last time that we did something, this of course, nobody's pointing a gun at your head and says you no, gotta go buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, look, I get that, right? And if you want to geek out on stuff and you know you're some hardcore open water swimmer who does you know all this other stuff like toe, you know, great, right? And you know, you're living the single life like Toby does with his, you know, 15 girlfriends all dotted around Hertfordshire, whatever he's up to. But if you're like a, a normal person, who has got 860 quid to spend on a watch? Just mm. anyway, ran over. But I, I had to say something because, and this is not, again, this is not a dig because this this watch, right, I tell you what, it's going to be unbelievable. It's going to blow your doors off and that's great. And the stuff it's got on it, I won't understand half of it. But I just think, again, it goes back to that point. It, at some point, someone's got to say something, and they? I mean, and who's going to buy these things? Well, I don't know. Maybe like these influencers, like our one on Instagram. I don't know, you know, uh, or what's his face, or, or or you know, all these amazing people like dad versus girls, and you know, who get all this stuff, you know, and and they walk about and it, and that's it. It's awesome. I mean, I I've got no idea, absolutely no idea. But it was quite yeah. interesting because um, another thing that I was going to bring up about cost. Um, yesterday, last night, um, Thursday, I was alerted among the Hartford group that there was a big discount going for um, the Winter Run, which is a 10K event that's going to be in the middle of London on uh, the 13th of February. And um, I found it interesting that I could get a £30 discount on a race that costs 45 quid to enter if you went during the normal. And I'm just wondering whether, you know, I'm just speculating whether people, organisers are perhaps coming to the conclusion that some of these races are getting a little bit expensive. I think, well, yes, I think, and I, I I might be wrong. We'll have to listen back over the 30 episodes that we've recorded, right? 30 people. You can download them on podcasts or whatever you call it. it we'll go tell them about that. But I think maybe, because I've, I've gone on about this before, but I think personally the sign-up is low. Whenever they do it, it's, 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 it's like the National Running Show, which is great this weekend, fantastic. But there's a reason why they've been banging out free tickets left, right and centre. Everything's been impacted, unfortunately, by the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I think money's tight for a lot of people. We're just talking about 860 people watches, but money's tight for people. And they are probably reluctant to shell out 45 big ones on something that, you know, in this world that we live in, who knows? So, it, I mean, it makes sense to, to you know, basically probably what they're doing is is covering cost. With yeah, I out. mean, I'm, I'm, I've no doubt that it's prohibitive for running around the centre of London on a Sunday morning. But maybe it's just going to be one of those things that just evolves a bit like working from home from the pandemic. You know, that it's just going to be a bit of a change of and people aren't going to be so I hope so. tempted to I hope push so. in and do the thing. I mean, it'd be interesting to hear what people think about whether, you know, when these things are coming up, whether they're going to wait and perhaps think, well, I might get a good deal if I wait until two or three weeks before. Yeah, I think you I, mentioned I think, that, I, isn't I, it? That, that you won't, you know, you, you must. If you paid full price and then effectively they're giving away tickets near the near the time, you're, you're not going to feel great about it, are you? Yeah, that's the point. If you've already paid forty five quid, I, I'd be not be like I get. I'm super lucky, right? So I, I'm 
got an invite and thanks very much it's a great run just big shout out because it's a great for a great cause okay um but yeah if if i had paid up 45 quid and then they just jobbed that out I, mm. i'd be sending a letter or an email and going oh tight where's my you know where's the dog yeah i should say it's, it, it supports cancer research which is obviously yeah exactly and it's a, brilliant. That is what I'm saying, charity it's a and... brilliant charity it's a brilliant race it's so well organized the guys there they do the manchester marathon as well they're a great company they do it all that's fantastic right 45 quid is daylight robbery i won't go across that again because i've spoken about that before but it does go to a good cause so yeah. fair play and and if you want that experience on race day for free come and volunteer i know mel house is putting together a exactly. volunteering team for that race so uh, i think there's space cool. is still available this is you know, we we're going to get a um, get Mel Howes an MBE at this rate. You know, all the stuff that she's doing for the group. Wow. Today, you know. We we need to talk to Mel Howes because I don't. I, I'll have to talk because Mel. I, I don't know. I'm probably, I'm going to get shot for this, right? Just say it. But you can nominate people to do the baton for the Commonwealth Games, right? You and you can nominate people now. Mel, I believe, has been nominated. So I think if we can get the link somehow, so I don't know how you can do that, boys. So, but get the link for her, and then I think everybody just jump on it and vote. Because wouldn't it be awesome to see Mel carrying that? Because she's not only just an amazing person and a, a big contributor to what we do on Forty Runs, but uh, but also like what she does down at Bushy Park and all that sort of stuff. So, I think. Um, and it was her birthday this week. We forgot to mention happy birthday. Oh yes, happy birthday! And hopefully, Carl is spoiling her rotten this weekend. Um, yeah, it's I'll, taking her for a weekend away at the NEC. <laughs> yeah, in Birmingham by the airport. How romantic! <laughs> but she'll clear it up. But just, I just pre warn anyone at the National Run Show if it's not nailed down, Mel does like a freebie. If you know what I mean. Sorry, Mel, you probably ain't listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're that great. You see, see, we started. You know, we've got all the great intentions of being wonderful, and saying lovely things about Mel, and we end up slandering her and telling her she's a tea leaf. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, I didn't know. I never said that. I just said she likes freebies. <laughs> I never forget we went to it was it's because we went to the um the expo, you know, back in the day when it was like okay to go around, you know, before all this started like taking a Mickey and getting us all there to get COVID. Um and she walked, she came out there, like I come out of there with like my race number and thought, well, that was all right. Listen to Martin yelling, and you know, I think if Chogi was there or, or whatever. And uh, I thought, yeah, that was blinded. Mel come out with about 18 bags of free gear. I'm like, where'd you get that from? She went, oh, I've got this from there, I've got this from there, and that, you know, they were giving that away. I thought, like, now. <laughs> she, 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 she proper rinsed them. She done well. I was proud of her. Yeah, fair there play, Mel. You yeah, deserve it, mate. Out. All the hard work you're doing. And, and actually, it leads nicely yeah. on, talking about Mel so lovingly, um, is that she's a big part of the Surrey Satellite Club, which is something we want yes. to talk about tonight. Um, yes. Yeah. So. What we thought we'd do, folks, because um, with the turn of the year, we I, I saw there were a couple of um, a couple of inquiries. People were sort of like saying, oh, I'd like to set up a satellite club and um, how do I go about it and things like that. So we thought it'd be a good subject to touch upon um, and then perhaps um, hopefully talk to some people in subsequent episodes about what they've done and um, how they've got their um groups up and running so um chris do you, do you want to just start and talk about you know what a sat what a satellite group actually is and how okay, it all yeah. came about all right well firstly before we get into that questions we want to hear from you it doesn't have to be satellite clubs because i know it's a bit uk centric so whatever you're whatever you've got as always you've got pool of info a uh, pool of knowledge here and i take myself out of that so ask these guys some questions if you want to know anything or you've got anything on your mind, just stick that in the chat. Um, but yeah, in terms of the satellite, so the satellite clubs are basically, so 40 Runs Running Club is a UK athletics affiliated running club. It is a non-profit. It's not there to make any money. We I set it up to give people like myself um, who maybe were running solo, don't want to be a part of all those horrible clubs like we got around there, where they're so far up their own bums, they're mean, they're rude. If you don't fast enough, you don't get to run and it only go out in two different paces and all this sort of stuff. All that, they can just all jog on. I've ranted and raved about them before. So I wanted to start the club, UK Athletics, to give everybody an opportunity to be affiliated, get the race discount and all the other benefits that come with it. But you can do it on your own terms. You don't have to go to club night. You don't have to go to the club awards and pay 30 quid for a dodgy bit of fish. So we've done that. And then... 
that took off and went nuts and it's one of the biggest in the country now which is amazing so thank you to everybody oh i'm going to do a plug if you if you're not affiliated with 40 runs in the uk now that can be wales scotland northern ireland you can actually get three months for free if you join now uh but you have to not be affiliated with another club before and you get because the membership because england athletics are backwards um they don't start that until april but you can get three months for free if you join now if you're not affiliated so like as i said if you're a lone runner and you know you're happy running on your own because that's your thing why not pay 16 quid fifth all that money goes to uk athletics the club pays 15 quid to them they charge one pound admin fee which is there to recoup money because the club has to pay a registration fee every year to uk athletics as i said it's non-profit if there is any money left over like they did they um, basically contributed towards the national running show to promote the club so it's or like we did they got money to give people qualifications so they used the money to um get some money uh, get to sorry get some money together to help people if they wanted to do a lurf course like russell danny wales will be doing a lurf the cut the club's paying for that so mm. it's my point is it's non-profit so we set it up like that born out of that we then um had some amazing people who said well why don't we get some 40s together in these different areas now i was doing it in in Broxbourne and Hartford, but they're, they're coach sessions because obviously I'm a coach. So I'm trying to help people improve themselves as a runner if they want to come along to that on, on a group basis. Uh, we do that. Uh, but outside of that, we wanted to bring people from 40 Runs Running Community, but also the club, but also people outside of that. We don't care if you're a member of another club and you want to come along as part of a social part of that. We wanted to create these what we call these satellite clubs. And we we're trying to encourage people to to start them up all over the country. Um, we've Alan's been a massive help in that, and we've got you know a couple of people that I'm trying to sort out now. Al, we've got a new one we've got to deal with, by the way, that came in today. Um, and we're trying to get what it is. We're trying to get the the ethos of the club out across the country, so people who feel like they're too slow or they don't belong or that you know they're fed up with this or you know maybe they're not confident enough or they get anxious going to these sort of other clubs where you have to go to a track and all this sort of business that they can come along and meet other runners like-minded runners and and just go out for a run or you know whatever way that goes and that's why it's really important that i think that we try and grow those to to give people an opportunity you know to 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 come into our ethos and to come into the family and feel the love um but what what's hard is that i can't be everywhere in the country because if i if i had you know could split myself in 50 ways i would set them up everywhere in the country because i wanted to give everybody the opportunity that i have and that's not just uh adults but i want to get the, the the kids involved i want to get the 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 older people involved because we do we you know we do we do um a senior group as well and i want to give everybody the opportunity to come together and be part of 40 runs and what we stand for um but i can't be everywhere in the country so it's amazing that we've got people like al we've got hayden uh helen and, and louise and the other louise and yan and and, and russell and, and everybody else around the country policy if i missed anybody out I, I can't even remember my own name but it can only grow and we can only bring people in if there's people like those people out in you know across mm. the country and there's nothing to stop us so ray i saw ray big shout out to ray ray why not set a 40 runs up in california you know, it, it doesn't just, you know, it's all about bringing the communities, your running community together, but everyday runners, not elites. Yeah, it's great if you've got a fast runner there. That's great. But so what? We don't care. It's, it's, it has to be for everybody and it has to be fun, but it has to be ultra inclusive. It doesn't matter where you are on your running journey. You want to be able to come together with like minded people and have some fun because that's what it's all about. So trying to find those heroes is very difficult because you have mm. to commit to time. And this is the biggest thing. It's the commitment. And obviously people have got families, jobs and things that get in the way. And, and that's, you know, that's again, I take my hat off to the people who have built and sustained the satellite mm -hmm. groups that we have because it's, it's hard work, you know, to, to, to get people along every week. And so it's more, know, it's more than just sort of like, let's meet in the park at seven o'clock on a Tuesday. No, you're creating your own mini community. And and you want those people engaged with each other, and it's there's nothing nicer to see than like the guys from Surrey all going to do part run together, or like Alan's guys doing a Malden part run takeover. Guys in South End, same thing, and and that's what you want. Like you guys in Hartford, you've basically created your own mini community. It doesn't really matter if I turn up or not. 
because you've got your own thing going on and that's what we want you know so these you guys form your friendships you form your communities you can form your support bases that's there uh mm -hmm. and and netty down in south end's do, doing you know the mental health um run mental health thing you know to bring that sort of mental health aspect into it so how 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 amazing it is to be able to have that support network at your local satellite group it is key and that's why you know thank you for giving me the platform today to talk about it because i want you know people who can commit to the time if you know to 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 develop it it's, it's it is a pain in the bum sometimes but the difference you can make to people's lives by having that anchor in in the week that they can know they can turn up to and there's someone friendly that they can run and talk to can be like game changing you don't know what that person's going through so to be able to turn up and just run three miles steady and have a chat about life can make a big difference to somebody so that's why it's, i'm so passionate about it mm. but it, it's it's hard work and and you know that i drop it people say oh how do i start a satellite group well just drop me an email but you know when i explain to them the commitment that it's involved i i you know i see a lot of people who never never reply back to me yeah and they don't understand because but i want to be honest with them and say you know you've got to show up every week and if you don't show up then have you know volunteers within your team you know that can that can step up and, and keep that keep it going because it's a support network for people you don't and you know it's it's a really powerful thing especially when you're so inclusive in which we are to bring everyday runners of all abilities together you don't know where they are so yeah it, i mean i've gone on about it too long but no not at all mate it, 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 i'm so passionate about it i I'd, mm. I'd have i'd have a 40 runs in every town in across the country as long as the ethos is exactly the same if it's not then i won't have it i won't have my name attached to it you know and if you're you know if we, we try and say you know if you are actually leading the runs we try and get you if we can help you get you qualified so you are insured you know you're, you're not doing coach sessions and not insured because if somebody has an accident then we're liable as a club so make sure that you know you know all these things when you do come in what, what's involved but you know you can start off with just literally social runs because that's yeah. that's the that's the, the the really the corner point of, of the club you know that social element and if, and if you can just get six of you like the park run guys did just get six of you together on a, on a tuesday night eight o'clock we're gonna go do three miles today brilliant because you can run and talk and have a chat and you know somebody might be struggling whatever so yeah i i mean just if you if you've got time you want to get involved you want to do more with 40 runs then just drop us an email at, and i'll give my email address out um no actually i'll give the club email address out it's 40 runs at hotmail.com i remember that one because i i send a lot of emails their way because uh, I, I i'm not actually again i put out i'm not actually involved day to day in the club i deliberately put myself outside of it so it's run properly and run to the letter of the law so we've got the constitution <laughs> we've got no because i'll go in there and i'll start cocking about and, and demanding things but no, so, you know, so when we do ask, you know, go to England Athletics and write grants and say, look, we want to train people up, give us money because you're giving money to everybody else to do nothing. Give us some money. And we'll put that to use. I don't want to be involved in that because I'm a bad mm -hmm. influence. So I deliberately take my I take a step out of it. I just run several um, of the satellite groups effectively. And I'm um the coach you know the top coach whatever it is of the club because i'm the most qualified out of everybody if there's someone more qualified who joins yours take the responsibility because yeah. then I can, i'm not on the committee um, so alan you've been you've been running a couple for sort of 18 months or so like how how have you sort of like combined the um the coaching aspect because you've been doing your badges and all that sort of thing and yeah. the organization of getting everybody together and things like that well, as Chris said, it, it is a commitment. Um, I think if you are going to take on a satellite club or thinking about it, um, you have to be your own biggest cheer squad because the, the, the effort really goes in making sure people know what's happening, what, what routes are you running, um, is it going to be a, a fast 5K, is it going to be a drill, what is it you're kind of actually going to be asking people to, to actually take part in. Um and then there's the, there's the questions. What time are we meeting? You know, where were we meeting? Um, and probably the biggest one that uh, I think Chris has kind of already addressed it in part, but it can't be overemphasised. You get loads of inquiries going, am I going to be too slow? And the Every answer week. is no, you're not going Every to be week. too slow. But then there is an obligation on whoever's leading to make sure you can put on a session and you can organise a run 
that can meet that ambition. Mm. Um, and therefore, understanding your locality, knowing where the different places you can run at different times of the year. So, you know, we've moved to a winter location in Chelmsford because we were in the main park one location. Um, it's not ideal, but it means I can keep an eye on everyone. And as coach and as run leader, that's really important that to the best of my ability, I can make sure whoever's running under my guidance that night is doing so in, in a safe way. Mm. Um, so you but then you can also, I mean, you can also tap into the people, yeah, I mean, which I know, well, Chris did with me when we were in Hartford, because when we, um, last year, when we first started running in the dark, it was like, well, where are we going to go? Can we, and I sort of like mapped out a 5k around the town. Yeah, we know and, about your route, Wilco. You, well, Should Tracy we got that? carried away, didn't Should she? Shane got the map thing. up. Um, if anybody's seen it on Strava, it looks like a uh, Wilco's 5k, right? Go and follow me on Strava. I would say it. What's the best way to? It looks like a a, a piece of the gentleman's genitalia appendage. Yeah, body parts. But what was funny is when Tracy started getting involved and making it even more, yeah, like, sort of noticeable. Exactly what she was. Yeah, doing. she should have been on a warning. Really, it was at least a yellow card. Um, yeah, but like, and also sort of like, oh yeah, I know there's an industrial estate where we can do some bits and stuff like that. So you have a look. You can tap up the brains of the people that are. Going, Absolutely. I mean, both of you have described what's involved, and it's been a little bit like, Oh, you've got to be prepared, it's going to be a bit of a ball ache. What do you actually get out of it, though? Oh, it's incredible! I love it, I absolutely love it. I love it when I see, like, example, last Monday, you know, we got new, uh, eight new women who come along. Oh, I can't run, I don't do this, I can't do this. And by the end of it, they've all done, you know, basically 5k. And oh, I didn't expect it to be like this. Well. What do you expect it to be like? And and that's the thing. It's giving them the belief and giving them the tools in which they can now go and change their life and wellness for the better. And as I said, the key to this is you don't know what somebody's going through. And the difference we make to those people can never be underestimated. And, and that's, you know, that's that's the gift. And I see you guys, you know, all bantering on the chats. And I see what Alan's doing and Hayden and everybody doing it. That's it's the same now, isn't it? You get that out of it when when you see these people connecting together. It's incredible. I don't. I was going to say it's really weird. I don't think it is weird. I think it's kind of kind of natural human behaviour. But you suddenly, because you're part of that community, you get as much sense of achievement of seeing your peers smash out a PB or conquering a distance or achieving than you do yourself. Um, so going out and doing lots of park runs at the moment with the Chelmsford guys. It's just brilliant because you just see everyone really pushing each other to improve. And then you, you come off, you get your times and whatever, you have the banter, and it just makes you feel good. So leaving aside your own performance that day mm. or whether, you know, you was up for it or not, you just get that every, you know, I get that every Tuesday you night. You do get Every Saturday I mean, when you manage to get to a park run you together. Saw, you saw the post from Helen, how she was buzzing after, you know, that their little thing. And, and you see the stuff from Hayden and all the rest of the guys. But, you, you know, you do you do get that buzz. I mean, it's a little bit different for our and I because we're actually coaching. Yeah. Again, you know, if you're, if you're coaching sessions and you've got the qualifications where you're actually able, you know, to coach people, because as I said, we... We we want people to be coached and everything's you know above board and stuff if you're doing it right. But you see you see the guys doing these sessions and 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 they're having to think about stuff that they're doing. And you know Helen's going to be starting a couch to to five k down in South End, which is going to be awesome with Nettie. And you know to to open it up to a different a demographics, the wrong word. I don't know what word, but you know what I mean. Different uh, people bringing different people yeah. in to do the couch to five, and uh, they're starting those people on their journey. And I said to Helen, you have got to remember those people. You're then going to take them from couch all the way up you know sometimes people are going to be doing marathons um and it's going to be you know to watch that just think about the buzz you're going to get going to get from it but that that's the that's the whole thing about but i think you have to be a certain individual al in in a way to give to to you well, to, slightly you, mad slightly mad um yeah you, you, you don't know it's, you do but Toby, you're the i mean Toby's a qualified coach Toby, you, you know you what do you get out of it apart from you know seeing me more in the week which i know you love yeah it's definitely i need that because i'd struggle if i didn't if i only had to see you every saturday i'd struggle oh he's got a great run tomorrow i'm not going to let you go carry on what no it's only no it is, it is it's that sense as you say is sense of achievement and, and say what, what you feel after seeing someone who turns up 
and says they can't run or just can run a bit or wants to improve, wants to get PBs. And when they hit them, you you know, you feel you feel part of it. Which is yeah. what it's all about, really, isn't it? And you, yeah. and you oh, get so a lot out of that. Cre- you're taking credit, are you? Yeah, basically taking yeah. credit. Mm. It's taking credit. No, no, you, credit. Right. you have that you have that emotional investment, don't you? Yeah, you do. But it doesn't matter if it's a social, as I said, it doesn't matter if you're doing the, on the social runs and you're, you know, you're literally, you're, you're organizing, you're just meeting up and, and again, you're forming those mini communities from within the community. Mm. You know, you do, you all get invested in what you're doing. You know, you all start going to power run together or whatever. Um, and it's like, it's funny. Uh, one of the ladies who came on Monday saw, I'm going to get this probably wrong, but like, I think it was Tracy and Laura and a few of the ladies together and she saw that, you know, they're all breaking up in 40 rounds. But she said that she saw them all running along and having such a good time. That's what made her inquire about, you know, mm-hmm. where where 40, what's this 40 runs all about? Um, or that as the whoever it was, I can't remember, it said earlier, the 4D runs um, on, on, the, on the group earlier. But I don't know, she asked, she said, you know, you guys are having such a good time uh, and wasn't, you know, was, was doing it, but having, you know, fun as she was going on, wanted to know, you know, what it was all about and, and and that's it right and that's what that's what it's all about it's, it's it's super super powerful super powerful and how do you manage to keep once you've snared people out how do you manage to keep them coming back well it's partly making it fun obviously if, if people are enjoying it then i think they're more likely to come back um because i'm coaching there is very much uh, a focus on helping them improve as a runner so being able to check in with them because of their park runs because of their their races and seeing how they're progressing people want to come back for more than that and just try and mixing it up so for example i think two weeks ago in chelmsford we were going to do a, a tempo session i like to introduce a little bit of jeopardy so it's flick of the coin heads easy run tail back out on a tempo and i think you know we ended up doing the, the same amount of distance the same amount of intervals but everyone took a tr- everyone took a turn and mm. kind of played that little part in the session in terms of flick the coin, shit, it's towels we go and again, you know, tempo run it is. So it's just finding little tweaks to make you know, the sessions just different and interesting each week. And again, goes, everybody goes for different reasons to the coaching yeah. sessions. I mean, I like I appreciate your advice and all that sort of thing. Sometimes I'll swear at you and uh, stuff so, like that. Like yeah, I did it was on very Tuesday. beautiful on Tuesday. Very but um, no, I mean. For me, probably it's more of a social thing, but yeah. I do appreciate, you know, that's I do appreciate the advice that I get, and um, that's good. But if it was sort of like if it wasn't coached, then I'd still go down to heart and common on a seven o'clock on a Tuesday yeah, yeah, and meet yeah. up with people and go out for a run. Yeah, no, I, that's, I think that's, that's, that's really important. Point. It's that's nice to get a mix, particularly when I do, you know, if I'm in a if I do a um, if I'm in a plan, you know, the vast majority of running I'm doing on my own, so it's just yeah. nice to and and you can arrange some. You know, you meet people and like Rachel joined our group two or three months ago. She just moved to Hartford. She didn't know anybody. And now she's been out running. You know, she's met a load of new friends. She's come, she's been out running in her own, in a new town. So she's found out where everything is. We went out and did, she'd never run a half marathon. So we went out and did one between, she just said, who wants to come? Yeah, let's go. And we just went. So it's great to have that. That facility, and, that, and that's the power of the, like that. yeah, the social part of it. You know, when we talk about starting out, how do I start one of these things? I'd love to be able to. I've got the time, I've got the commitment. Start a social, yeah. so, you a shouldn't think, social. Oh, god, I've got to put on tempo sessions. No, 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 yeah, you, you shouldn't just, anyway because you're not qualified. Who wants to go out for a run on Tuesday? Yeah, just just you know, put it out there. You know, oh, we're starting this, we're going to try and make it see who comes along. What night suits you? Oh, Tuesday night, seven o'clock. I'll be, I'm pretty free, I'm pretty free. And that's how it all starts. And then it can develop. And then the club can help you. We can advertise it. We can give you some direction on, you know, how to bring in new people, to, you know, in the local area. Because there's always people, you know, who who think that these clubs are for certain types of runners because it's just that perception. And I don't blame them because I said to you, you know, there's a club around here. It's like that it drives me up the wall. But it is what it is, you know. So if you can get out there and be the voice of, of what we stand for, um, and what the ethos is, and, and bring you know more people into that to show them that they can get fit, get healthy, and improve their mental health through running, and meet other people. Then do it, and we'll support you the whole way. So you know that's that's what it's all about for me. 
um yeah and that's and that's why i started the club and and that, and that's why i keep pushing it like hell but you know just if you it, think about like, if you've been if you've done any events and you've had a meet up with the other club members from all over the place and you think about you know sometimes you know that's the best bit meeting up with everybody before and after is it like forget about the race in the middle it's just seeing that's everybody and having a good time what, it's like yeah. that every tuesday that's, that's what I started. how it is what I said, yeah. it's what goes back to my original point why i started all cocking about with what i'm doing you know and and it was because i was on my own at the london marathon looking around and everybody pretty much was sitting on their own not talking to each other and we was all absolutely in it and worrying about what we're going to do and, and what what's that all about? And you've got, you know, your so-and-so athletics club all like, oh, you, I'm going to go and smash out two and a half hours. Well, crack on, mate. Um, and then, you know, there's the rest of us all sitting there going, bleak nil. And it's so nice now to when you do go to something, even if it's just park run, you know, and that's not being disrespectful, fun, but, you know, just see some of you, you know, familiar, for, oh, yeah, blah, 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 chatting. It's, it's just, that's what it's all about. And that's why I started because, it is an anxious environment if you're going to a somewhere new and you've got to do something like a bit stupid. Um, it can be a it can send your anxiety into overdrive, but knowing that chances are there's going to be somebody you know dressed in pink or one of our exciting new colors, Haribo or South oh, Indian, um, yeah, yeah. or rhubarb and custard, like but, no, blue, it, right? but it doesn't matter what color top you're wearing, it's it's not it, it doesn't even matter what top you're wearing, it's all about you know, having that belief in what we do in terms of having fun and being inclusive and, and you know, just enjoying the fact that we're out there running and we're doing it together and having a laugh. And and the times will come because if you're enjoying something, those times that you set yourselves, if that's what you want to do, they all fall into place. It's, it's a lot different. So, yeah, I think we probably milked that quite a lot, actually. About yeah. The we should probably talk about something else like, I don't oh, know. Well. Toby's lack of effort in, you know, the production area. Uh, the fact that I've still not had a KFC vegan burger. I mean, we could talk about anything if you want. Uh, well, how's the food going? How are you getting on? Yeah, I see. I'm at the currently. Um, I would say ninety percent is probably a bit strong. Um, there is that. Oh, I won't go into it, but there is a reason for that this week. But, mm. um, but yeah, ninety percent is probably a bit strong. Although, Al, today. Yeah. 100% back on track. Um, and yesterday, although Mrs. Ford said that I had very bad breath after these, I had those um, meat free, meat free meat ball things. And she said that I like it stunk. I basically, they must have something in them that I stunk mm -hmm. after it. But then again, it might have been the, the sauce because I had it in like this vegan sun dried tomato thing, which is probably a laced of garlic. Is garlic vegan, by the way? Because, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Um, and it's, that's probably what it is. But definitely 90% this week is, yeah, I concur, is strong. But there is an underlying reason. And, um, mm. yeah. But, I'm go yeah, I'm going out in style. In, in the spirit of coaching, getting you closer to 100%, your homework this week is to dig out some jackfruit and see what you can conjure up with jackfruit. Now, where's the best place for jackfruit? What's jackfruit? Well, obviously, the supermarkets is where I get mine. Oh, you can get it in Tesco's. What is jackfruit? Yeah. Oh, it's a fruit from a jack. I don't know. But it's, it? it's, it's, it's about the size of a basketball, isn't it? It, it? it shreds up like shredded pork. So mine's going in my fajitas as soon as we come off this podcast. Don't lie out. You know you're having chicken. We know you're having chicken. Don't give I us a I'm um, having jackfruit. Jackfruit's code word for beef. <laughs> I've had a I've had a mixed vegan week this week. I had um I delved into the world of uh, vegan cheese and I won't be going there oh, again. Yours, big seller. Even the most, you know, even no. the biggest fundamentalists on um, no at work and that no, no. they've all given that. I'd the rather lick your feet after a twenty-six mile run. No, horrible. No, yours, big seller. But I'll I tell you what, the video. I had a vegan birthday cake. Oh, and it was off the hook. Really? That wicked one that they do. Oh, the, the boss um, boys, the really boys? good. I did huh? film that. I did film my video this week about my weight loss. I updated after being on. Uh, unsponsored Huel. Um, I updated on that this week, so that's coming out. I think it might be coming out in two weeks. Oh, big shout out! I think I did the other week anyway, but just uh, uh, this messy happy. Their video is coming out in a couple of weeks as well, so big shout out for them for helping me out. Um, uh, yeah, so just big, big, big uh, love for them. 
but yeah, no, so I did my weight loss video. I filmed that this week, um, which was quite interesting. So I'm still on the fuel um, thing because it's a say it just works for me uh, in terms of you know not eating took when I get home effectively, which is what I said. Before. Now, Al, I've got a couple of races coming out, and I'm thinking yeah. about fueling and the vegan thing. I'm I, I have the high five, so they all right. I don't know. I've never used those, so I don't. Ask Ask Toe. Because to um, he used them at Dorney. Oh, did he? Well, no, they yeah. wasn't high fives. They were no, six. Was no, it's the Kendall mint cake. KMC what you had at Dorney? Yeah, that's what I always use. You was using them when you went to Dorney, and you told me to have the Kendall mint cake. But I used them for everything. It wasn't just Dorney. I thought it was the dodgy pizza the night before that did you at Dorney. Yeah, in the chance that wasn't... I didn't really have many of them at Dorney. I thought it was probably best not to have too many gels. Oh, there. that's true. No, it mm. was it was the pizza, wasn't it? And it, but high five, I, I remember him moaning about them. It, that goes through I, him anyway. Yeah, I can't do high fives. to give me a stomachache. Oh, I've, I've been getting on with them all right. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm at the bottom of the good. box. And I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do. Yeah, because I... I, I I used to do um I used to have SIS, but then I changed when um George. when I put in for um Yorkshire and um Edinburgh, they were both high fives up on the course, so I thought yeah. well, I'll change. That's a good tip. I get stuck on the day. That is a good tip, you know. Check check what's what's on the course for the day. I I did that a couple of years ago. I was taking Lucas A sport because London Marathon and that stuff's like liquid cocaine, you know, at the end of your run. Um if you know, so I we started putting that in. You know, we ditched the um, active route towards our third cycle of long runs, and we was using um, Lucas Sports, so we a gut was ready for the day. But yeah, I think that's not a bad a bad shout getting ready. But it is interesting, Wilco. Tobe and I were talking about this whether we're going to be self sufficient at Edinburgh because because the staff is a bit like it and miss about what we're going to be using. And I refuse, by the way, anybody who tells me about malt and gels or Unived, I'm not prepared to remortgage. Um, to buy those, but if they want to sponsor the podcast, send us an email to shamic.com. Um, but I, I refuse to pay that sort of money that they ask for. But it is it is an issue in terms of what they've got because they've got a high five out on the course, which it, you know doesn't work for me, and, and funny enough, don't work for Toe. So we're now thinking, are we going to go self sufficient? So wear a hydration pack with you know, whatever mm. we're fueling with, um, we're on the Kendall stuff. Oh, I think I'd always, I'd always, took, I mean, even though High Five was on the course in Yorkshire, I put half a dozen in my bum bag and took them with me. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it, I like to also take on um, fluid, like, so I, you know, I, everybody knows I use Active Fruit um, while I'm out there, um, apart from when I did London because it, because of the Lucas Aid Sport, but it's it's finding something that finding a way to fuel it correctly. Don't forget we're going not that it makes it, but we we're, we're going for a time. So we're trying to really be strategic in terms of when we fuel, how much we fuel, and yeah. like on the money. So we get if we get our fueling right, I think that will be critical from being, you know, three forty five, you know, instead of three fifty. So is that a know, new thing for you then to actually be self sufficient and? Do yeah, I hate it. Feel? I hate it. But I don't looking at Edinburgh, looking at the course, looking how pony they are in terms of you know high five, which is all right for some, but for me it don't work. I don't want to take the risk of of having to rely on them. So I'd rather be self sufficient, even though I hate it. Mm. I'd because I'm because we're going for a time. If I weren't going for a time, I couldn't give a monkeys. I'd drink and eat anything you like. But because we're training so. We're trying really to be good at it in terms of when we are fueling and what we are fueling and how much we are fueling. Then we want to make sure that we do exactly the same on race day. So at the moment, the plan is is to take our own hydration vest, fuel accordingly, and then ditch them with like 10k to go and then mm -hmm. hang on for a dear life, basically. So That's Al, it. when does your um sort of like your dietary requirements do they affect your fueling during a race, during a run? He stops for croissants quite a lot. Well, it's for January, and they are all over the place at the moment, so you can mm. stop. Yeah, but we know the one you had, wasn't You don't know that. You're, you're just guessing and surmising. No, no, that way, huh? We've got evidence. We've got evidence. It, no, you've you got know, evidence I was having a cross on. You haven't got evidence what, we, what was what <laughs> Paul was. Have you been to the vegan prep yet? That's the serious question. Yeah, sorry, go. What's what the question, the Wilco? The serious question was how, um, whether, as a vegan, you cater for yeah. yourself when it comes to in-race fueling. At the end of the day, getting round the course would be 
top priority. So if 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 there was a choice between not taking something and taking something that might not be vegan, I'd probably still take something because I don't mm. I don't do the veganism for the the ethical stuff. Which we know. Uh, um, I suppose the other thing to think about, and it's you know it's a challenge to Chris and Toby as well, is track your fueling in your days leading up to your long runs and your race to make sure you've got the the right balance of carbs and proteins did that today bro and and it's a myth that you can only get protein from meat in chicken and stuff like that so good balanced diet eat the rainbow i heard today there's more protein in broccoli than there is in steak quite possibly yeah how much proteins in corn the vegetarian the vegan one i haven't got those figures to mind but they'll be on the back of the packet so but that's uh, what that's what i had for lunch yeah because i'm hardcore what about mm. the three portions of chips and the ketchup that went with them? No, I didn't have chips. Oh, I, I didn't vegan. have chips. Huh? What? Tomato chips sauce is vegan. Is it? I don't yeah. know. Are you sure? Yeah, very much so. It's written in big letters on the back of the hind. Oh, right. Well, I'm all in then. That was the first thing I looked at, mate, when it all <laughs> when all this kicked off. Really? Is that the deciding factor? If it wasn't vegan, you weren't going vegan. Yeah, I've done, yeah, I've had vegan salad cream as well. Because salad cream is definitely my condiment of choice, and. um I managed to uh, find some vegan salad cream in Tesco's, and that's not too bad. Hmm. Look at our face. Yeah, it's lovely. Look. Yeah, yeah lovely. I know. Like, 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 you know, we were talking about taking people under your wing as, as a coach <laughs> and seeing them grow and develop. <laughs> I can't get that from from. I don't need guys. no. I, I don't need any encouragement to grow anymore, mate. No, I think I've done expensive. really well. Well, we just got to work on toe, top left corner. I've got yeah, my got dinner top tonight. Left, top right sorted. It's just top left. Look, toe, look, look. Big shout out, JBS, just giving us a super chat. He just messaged me privately and said that's because he wants you to become full time vegan. I right? had a vegan dinner. What actually? What by mistake? Minus the meat. If you take the meat yeah. out, it was a bit. Oh, I, I, and the cheese actually. Yeah. That's because his girlfriend didn't. That that's because his girlfriend didn't go Tesco today. That that was that's carb loading for tomorrow. Yeah, but she tell the truth. She didn't go Tesco to fill your fridge up today. It's difficult with invisible girlfriend, isn't it? Well, several. Mm. Oh, I have got some running news. If we get back to that, um, oh, I've, sorry, got on, about running again. Sorry. I've got a place in the Dublin Marathon. Oh, when's that? Um, I'm going, I was going to go to Germany, go to Frankfurt at the end of October. And um, I've got another two years for, um, because I had a place in 2020, another sort of like a carryover. And um, they ran a, um, they ran a lottery, you know, ballot a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, well, with the circumstances, I'm, you know, I'm seeing Bayern Munich are playing football matches in front of only 500 people. And the restrictions seem to be a lot tougher in Germany than they do. I didn't want to sort of like put all my, I thought, well, I'll throw my hat in the ring to Dublin and see what happens. And I can go to Italy. And I've got a place. So yeah, October the 30th. October the 30th. Ty, what are we doing October the 30th? Um, I, I'll on. start my Christmas eating around then. <laughs> this is Christmas eating. What are you hiding? I thought you were going to say Christmas shop before your girlfriends, but okay, Christmas eating is different. Yeah, all right, let's Don't do shopping, no. No, we know that. Yeah, we know that. So, oh, this is the blue shirt. Well. So, can you buy a ticket for for that? Because I think we've got we've got so many people in Ireland. I think we're probably now the biggest uh, running podcast in Ireland. Um, I, I'd love to hear if we've got any Irish listeners, you know, to give us any, um, give me any advice about doing the Dublin Marathon. I've been to Ireland a few times. I, know, I love going over. It's brilliant. It's a great place. Yeah, Ireland will go. Mm-hmm. Last week, fourteen people downloaded it. 14 downloads in Ireland. Ireland. Hello, everybody in Ireland. We're massive. We're we're massive in Ireland. So, yes, I'm really looking forward to that. I've watched the video. It seems a nice course. Is it around the the town? Yeah, it should be good. Email in if you've uh, done the Dublin Marathon, please, at hotmail.com. Yeah, longrunshow at gmail.com. Any advice on the um, Dublin Marathon? Our pictures improve. You can't see it on the podcast, but ours mm. just a blank screen. I think that's an improvement. I don't know what's time, happening. What's happening to Al? Well, he's that time, isn't it? He's gonna the nurse has come around to change his bag. That's why he says he's, he's mm. done the screen. So just to wind up, and um, you boys, what are you up to tomorrow? 20 miler? Yeah, 20 miler for us tomorrow. We're going, we're going big, we're going early. Well, what we we actually mucked up, we'll go. We should have done it last week, right? But I talked Tobe out of it because I was blown out of my rear end. 
mm. as usual. And don't forget, he's 10 years younger than me. Well, yeah. Um, so, and he left me again, by the way. He left me uh, with three and a bit miles to go. He just looked at me. He, he, if you will, coach, he does this sort of looks behind you, smiles like he did up Snowden, and then you don't see him, he's gone. And then he's yeah. just waiting for you at the finish, like he ain't done nothing. It's really I can't annoying. believe it. We've spent 55 minutes talking about the social benefits of running. Well, no, and, and then he legs it. And, and then, oh, look. Al, look, boys, stop, stop, stop the convo. We'll come back to it. Al has just posted in, on Facebook that he's lost power on his laptop. Oh. I mean, can't that is, the pace. And he I can't mean, even what? do the Facebook authorization thing. He can't, he's useless. Yeah. Absolutely useless. Anyway, so yeah, well, so sorry, we'll Alan fans. Yeah, sorry, our fans. See him at the running show. Don't worry about it. He'll be there. Um, we uh, we should have done 20 last week, really. He wasn't on the plan, but we was um, cruising along. And then Silly Nuts there decides to think, oh, it's the like, 5K sprint to the end. So I try to keep up with him, Natch. And I'm, I'm done. So we sacked that off. But so we're going for it tomorrow. We should have done it. Thing. So I don't know. I don't know whether it's, it's a smart idea or whatever, but... We're going to do it because we've got nothing better to do. Keep, really. No, keeping to the plan. That's what we're doing. Yeah, he does say it in the plan because we work in a situation uh, before, Wilco, we work in these rotations. Mm. Um, we always go 16, 18, 20. We run through 16, 18, 20 rotations. And the next so one. What's that? Have... So in your plan, you, you say that because this is the Brighton plan? No, this, no, this, is, this is Edinburgh. So oh, what, right. we, what we do, we start early, we build base, right? right. Then... Funny enough, the video's coming out this weekend, and I talk Good exactly plan. through the plan. So check it out this weekend on the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, share it with everybody you know. Good plug, 40. Um, but the we go through these rotations, 16, 18, 20 miles. And I'm not saying that that's what you should be doing. This is what we do, okay? Just put it out there because it, it's worked for us in the past. And it's the first rotation is 16, 18, 20, easy pace. Like, he loves it because I can just – oh, he's back – I can talk to him for you know anything up to three and a half hours, and he loves it. He, he loves it. Nothing better than just listen to me for three and a half hours. And then the second rotation, we then start putting goal pacing, and then the third rotation, most of not most of it, but a large portion of it is goal pace. So it's mm. just the fact of building through that, and then we have weeks that we jot in between where we are scaling back, so we'll have a down week. So next week's a down week, um, which is perfect, you know. So that would be. Could be a, a six, seven miler in the in on the trails, could be a, a cheeky fast 10 miler, could be a you know, out and out, you know, 10k record. But the problem is with Toby, he's got that dodgy watch and it and he won't record it properly. So yeah, but he's of, probably got 860 quid for a new one. No, he's not not with this is the problem. Now he's got two out of these, he's got 15 girlfriends on the go. Yeah, see, three and weeks ago he would have had 186 quid for a new watch. Yeah, this is the he used to. But then he got popular because of the long run uh, podcast. He's inundated yeah. from with men and women after him, and you know the boys, you know, busy. So See, the long run podcast can indeed change lives. Yeah, well, we're changing lives in the Falklands. Did I mention that? Yes, we're now the biggest podcast in the Falklands. And everybody, thank again, genuine thank you to everybody. Right, it still blows our mind the fact that people listen to this because most of it is nonsense. Um, <laughs> And down like, but keep sharing it, right? Because I think it'll be hilarious if we get it even higher up the chart. I just honestly, genuinely mm. think it'd be hilarious because this we're is like just, a novelty record. Yeah, this is so unorthodox what we do here compared to all these polished, well produced, you know, money backed, you know, commercial driven podcasts. This is not. This is not. What I really the legends. Who said oh, that? Oh, did that pop up on the screen? Oh, I didn't realise. Oh, yeah, funny. I reckon Terry, you, you said loads yourself, of lovely coach. things about us and then you dropped that on us, mate. What? I reckon you wrote that yourself. Is your name Terry Lappins? That's no, 100% no. you that you're... Yeah, <laughs> look. He's writing back now. To, he's writing back to himself. <laughs> That's 100% you, Tobe. Nobody thinks you're a legend. Oh, you're I do, Tobe. Really don't nice. You left the old man by himself. At the end of that run last week. Don't listen to him, Toby. I'll give him permission. <laughs> Stand him by that. Yeah, true. look at Al. Look, he's still awake. I'm back. I turned the lights off. Oh, back, back just in time for us to wind up, Al. You found a yeah, power cable. Well, so excited about your trip to Dublin because us Chelmsford satellite foldies are hatching a plan to do a Dublin park run in the not too distant future. Mm. So, and you uh, know what? We'll trailblaze right. for you, Wilco. 
Yeah. You know what? That is a brilliant way, right, to end the show. And it summarises everything that we spoke about today in terms of the satellite clubs and the club and the ethos. The fact that that community is now together hatching these amazing plans to go and do awesome things in, in faraway places. And that sums it up perfectly about how awesome everybody is within this community, whether you're watching this on YouTube in, you know, Falklands or Nicaragua or, you know, you're part of Alan's crew down in Chelmsford. It's it's for everyone. And I think that is just a brilliant, brilliant way to finish it off this week. Don't you think, boys? Lovely. Well, I was just wondering whether we should answer Ray's question, but that's probably going to have to be for another week now, isn't it? Well, what was it? Oh, it was it was nearly an hour ago. Do you think me? I can remember. <laughs> no, you can't even remember what you're having with tea, lady. Oh, he's he's one, job. He's got, one job, uh, ladies and gentlemen. He's got them chicken fajitas that he's having in a minute. Is that what? Yeah. That's where he went. He went. To, he went to put the chicken on. He had a big no, jackfruit no, no, no. session. Jackfruit. Jackfruit. I'll take a bite. No, no way. Not in your. Not in a million million years. Right, come right on, I think that's about out. time that perhaps we uh, let everybody else get on with their Friday night. Thanks ever so much for joining us, whether you've been on YouTube or Facebook. We're here every week at 7 o'clock on a Friday, so uh, please feel free to pop in again and say hello and uh, send us your questions. If you want to um, send us an email in the week, um, send it to um, longrunshow at gmail.com. <laughs> I, I nearly forgot. forgot it then. That was pretty good. I rescued that, <laughs> snatched that from the jaws of defeat. Um, so, yeah, please say catch up on the pod uh, on the podcast at um spotify and apple and amazon and all them sort of places take us out in your long run you know we cheer you along take it nice and easy look after yourselves this week think about whether you want to be a satellite club runner and whether you want to get together with a few people in your community and pop out and have a nice social run and we shall see you next week thank you very much for joining us thank you very much everybody toby take us out